I'm Dan Ward, back at it again with another deck of the week. This week, I have chosen the most popular deck from the Pro Tour, and also just the best deck in the format to current date. And we have none other than Ramanap Red. So this deck won the Pro Tour. We saw six copies of this deck, five if you count the uh, one splashing black, uh, dominating the Pro Tour from numbers of overall performance as well as uh, conversion rate into day two. And I thought it would be, I'd be amiss to, or remiss, excuse me, if uh, we didn't bring this one up this week. So here we go. Uh, the deck's going to start off with a bunch of one drops. We have here Bomat Courier, Falconrath Gorger, and Village Messenger. Um, we heard LSV getting to lots of puns with the Courier and the Messenger kind of being like the, uh, the post office. But these are the essential cards you need for turns one and two. You want to be putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. Uh, Falconrath Gorger, you don't really use the any of the ability of the vampire. It's very seldom that you might discard one of them to a Bomat Courier, uh, but it is possible, I guess. Uh, Village Messenger, we've saw a Soul Scar Mage in some of the lists. Uh, Messenger, having haste is important. Uh, most of the creatures in this deck, in fact, have haste, and I think the upside to this is playing it on turn one, and a lot of opponents going into this tournament, if you were playing a deck that just didn't have that many turn one plays, and you got to flip, having the flip side of that, a 2-2 Menace creature, is uh, is really a big game on turn two. But the uh, the downside is, if you follow that up with having two more one drops on turn two, it flips over. So it's one of those like controversial, we saw some lists have Village Messenger, some Soul Scar, Mage, and kind of gone back and forth. Um, and the one that's not a red card here, Bomat Courier, the uh, artifact creature construct, uh, it's one of those cards that it's very good on turn one, and watching a lot of matches this weekend, I was really impressed with how this card brought the red decks back into a lot of games, because it forces your opponent to have a removal spell right away, or you just get like two or three cards, and just having the option to be able to discard your hand and then, you know, kind of redraw, so to speak, or, you know, loot, um, is kind of really cool, and I think it brings a dynamic to a very aggressive deck that they haven't had in a while, so... I like, I like Bomat Courier a lot in this list. Next, we're going to get into a, a little bit more expensive creatures. We have Earthshaker Kenra, a new addition from Our Devastation. And then we have, at the right side of the screen, we have Oncrop Crasher, which is another. Both these creatures have haste. And we have a two drop and a three drop. And both of these creatures kind of do very similar things. They're going to come into play. They're going to attack the turn they come into play. And uh, one's a trigger when it attacks, and one's a trigger when it enters the battlefield. And it's going to prevent your opponent from doing what they want to do, which is block against a very fast and efficient red deck. Um, Earthshaker Kenra wasn't on camera too much this weekend as, as far as the eternalize ability, but it is a real thing, and I believe it puts the card at just kind of an over-the-top range where you'd see traditionally just the two drops being like, okay, it's an aggressive two drop, has an ETB, and that's kind of just all the we've been asking for in, in recent uh, days as far as being a successful two drop in red. And we've been really lacking a good one other than the next card we talk about, Kari Zev. And so having an additional bonus of just the Eternalize, there is some percentage there where you're going to be able to Eternalize, and it's just now your opponent's at a position where if they kill it, you know, they have to worry about you eternalizing it later in the game, depending on when they kill it, or they have to just take this incremental, uh, you know, nug of damage, which is like, that really adds up, and, and, and this deck's really, like, built to do lots of small points of damage that accumulated will just kill you. So, I really love Earthshaker Kenra. I think it's one of the most important cards in our devastation um, for this deck in specific. Um, and lastly, Kari's of Skyship Raider. We're already getting into Pirates, we're not in Nixalon yet, but this card, when it first came out, I was really uh, really happy to see it. With it being a legend, and also with what I talked about not being a lot of efficient two drops, we haven't really seen a deck in Standard be able to run this card, just based off the fact that there wasn't enough other two drops to go alongside it. Um, and in this list we see three, uh, First Strike, Menace, 1-3 Creature, when it attacks you get a 2-1 Monkey, Ragavan. It's just one of the better cards that this deck can have on offense and defense. Uh, versus the mirror matches, we saw it just, hey, you play it on turn two, and you're going to find out really fast if your opponent has a removal spell or not, because they're not going to be able to attack through it with it being a three toughness creature and, and living from magma spray and shock. And, and it really did its, uh, did its work this weekend. So I really like uh, this card moving forward as well with the deck. 
And we've got our, our heavy hitters in the deck. We've got two Chandras and three Hazards. Uh, throughout the weekend, every time if you were tuning in, you had time to watch, every time I tuned in, Hazard was just coming down and winning games. And uh, it was just remarkable how powerful that card was. We saw different lists running. Some of them were running uh, the Collective card over Chandra's. We've got Collective uh, Defiance. And I like both of them. They both deal with Kalidus, which I think is important. Um, I don't think it was Kalidus was played that much this we, uh, last weekend, but this weekend coming up, I think it will be more prevalent to have an answer to that. I don't know with running three Hazards, and I think it's everyone's opinion now, the popular opinion, that four Hazards is correct. You just want to draw that card, especially in the mirror. It's, it's very important. So I don't know where the cut's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be on one of maybe the early drops. Um, or if we're going to shave a Chandra, but both of these cards are phenomenal, and PV decided to run two Chandras in the main, and as we'll get into the sideboard, he also had two more in the sideboard, so really like this card, but I think because of the curve, um, was really tough to play more than uh, the number you see here. Um, and then a couple removal spells, so we've got four Shocks and four Braids. Uh, I really like the, the choice of both of these. I think Incendiary Flow really gives you a lot of flexibility on top decks later on in the game, but overall power level, I think, going into the weekend, a Braid was a better choice given the God Pharaoh's deck was coming up, and also given the fact that I think PV considered that a lot of people that were playing Red were going to be on a similar plan as him, and Zombies for that matter, of having Aether Sworn, Aether Sworn Harvesters, um, and maybe even Heart of Karen to some extent. But I think more of the Harvesters, and it's a really powerful card in the mirror matches and versus zombies because flying and lifelink, it, it's really important. And this card deals with that, and I think he just wanted to have, you know, enough cards to deal with those while being flexible to just kill, you know, God Pharaoh's Gift if it comes to it, which in this deck it really shouldn't, um, but also just killing all the creatures that Incendiary Flow would kill in the beginning of the game. You kind of lose the, the exile effect that Incendiary Flow has. You lose a little bit of the flexibility to be able to point to the face. But I do like a braid um, a lot, and I understand why it's in this list. Moving on to the lands. You see the first one there, Remnant Ruins, is the namesake card of the deck. This is uh, just one of the instrumental parts of why this deck can exist at the level it can exist. So we see four of that. We see 12 mountains. Uh, four Sunscorched Deserts, and two Scavenger Grounds. Sunscorched Desert, you're playing a monocolor deck. You can afford to play a colorless land because you already have so many sources of red. Um, maybe not the most powerful desert uh, that came out in the Hour of Devastation or Amiket, but you know the one point, like I discussed earlier, having that incremental damage is really important. Um, and the deck wants to play more deserts with ramen up ruins being able to obviously sacrifice deserts and go to the face um, The scavenger grounds also a desert. So we're playing a total of ten deserts I think that's a con uh, consideration going into the weekend that there was going to be more graveyard decks and That you know if we can afford to if there's enough red sources in the deck um, Already you have 16 there which PV thought was enough um, you can you can have the access to having another desert that you can chuck with Remnant Ruins, as well as you know versus some of these graveyard decks, you're going to have two cards in your deck that can uh, can deal with them. So I didn't see it go to work too much uh, on camera. I think it was mainly because most of them were mirror matches, and you don't really need it versus the mirror match. So moving forward, I don't know if that's going to be something we're going to see uh, less number of scavenger grounds or maybe move to the sideboard. So so yeah. And here we go, we're going to the sideboard. So, first off, we got a few removal spells here. We're talking about Chandra's Defeat, Savage Alliance, and Oath of Chandra. Um, I like Chandra's Defeat. It's obviously really good in the mirror, and uh, you know, I believe a lot of people expect it a lot, uh, mirror matches. So being able to just kill a creature for one red at instant speed, it's really powerful. It hits everything in the sideboard plan all the way up the ladder from you know, the Soul Scar Mage or the Village Messenger all the way up to Glory Bringer, which is really important, um, while dealing with Chandra. And a, and a lot of people are going to try to go bigger in the mirror matches. So I think, uh, you know, it's the most efficient removal spell possible after game one uh, for this deck in the mirror. Another really good card in the mirror. Um, this got a constant theme going on here with uh, this sideboard for PB's list 
a Savage Alliance, a card from Elgin Spoon that we haven't really seen too much play, uh, unless we're talking about limited. We haven't really seen it in uh, Constructed too much. But a lot of the toughness, as you could tell from me going through all of the creatures in this deck, uh, were one toughness. We are just like basically killing every single creature in the deck minus the Karizev, Hazaret, and uh, Uncrop Crasher. So having a modal card in your deck that just board sweeps, and especially if your opponent's not ready, is kind of important. Um, also having the, the utility of being able to give your creatures trample and just two damage, you can also just kill another creature. I think it's pretty big game in some uh, circumstances. And the last card, Othashandra. I think this is a consideration to black green um, while also killing you know, creatures in the mirror match versus zombies, dealing with long tusk cubs, dealing with uh, winding constrictors, you know, with running the three of braids, maybe just having one more, uh, a fifth source that can deal with that on turn two is kind of important. So I think that's where you, uh, where you wanted Oath of Chandra. And I think it was a selection just based off the fact that uh, there's four Chandras in the 75. So the incremental damage, again, I can't stress enough, being able to maybe get, you know, a ding in for two points, you know, it, it's, it's going to be some kind of percentage. You know, it's going to be a positive percentage um, that's worth note. All right, now we're gonna get into some of the creatures, some more flexible stuff here. We've got two glory burners, two sand stranglers, and two PNLRs. Um, one of the common themes we saw with the mirror match and just this deck in general is the flexibility to be able to go from a all-in aggro red deck to more of a mid-range utility two-for-one deck. Um, we see that with glory bringer, with all three of these cards, they do multiple things, ETB effects or attack triggers. Um, Sand Strangler was one of the ones that I was, I would I don't want to say it was surprised to see, but it kind of caught me off guard because for four mana having a Flame Tongue Cabo effect, um, you don't really like, we haven't thought of that, at least someone else hasn't thought of that prior to this, I haven't seen it online, and so it was one of those when I saw it at the Pro Tour, I was like, all right, this is a card that they definitely tested, and uh, in PV's list, with having 10 Deserts, I think you can reliably count on the, uh, the trigger um, once you get to four mana with the Sand Strangler. P and Nalar was another card this weekend that I was really impressed with. You know, a lot of the removal spells that the mono red decks or the zombie decks have for that matter. And I guess just most of the decks that were played, uh, all three of the decks in the top eight, P and Nalar seems like it'd be fine versus um, you want cards that are going to be able to force your opponents to have to deal with more than one thing. You know, any fatal push. Grasp of Darkness, uh, Incendiary Flow, Magma Spray, Shock, you're still going to have one half of, uh, of the card left over, or the card would have already done its damage. So PNLR seems like a, a great card. It gives you a little bit more um, things to do as far as a Aether Sworn Harvester, which we'll get into in the next slide, and as well as Bomac Carrier, because you have a couple other artifacts in here that you can either sack to get the Camp Block effect, or to be able to pump and get in those last couple points of damage. Um, and here we are, Aether Sworn Harvester and the second Chandra's. Uh, Harvester is just one of those cards that in the mirror match, as well as zombies, both decks do not have really good answers to flying creatures. So if they don't have a removal spell for artifacts, which zombies happens to not have, right now their hope is to fatal push, they have to have something die, and then get the Harvester. And if the mono red deck is not playing a Braids, then after sideboard they kind of are in real bad shape if this uh, this card lands. So having a 3-5 flyer that has a built-in evasion, crew one is so easy in this deck. You know, obviously any creature uh, in the deck has at least a power of one, and having the, the two sources of energy to, uh, or the two energy, excuse me, to be able to use for the lifelink, you're gonna have like a nice swing there of gaining six through a blocking or attack situation. Um, and last but not least, the two other Chandras, one of the uh, one of the things that was a constant theme of this deck, not only in the uh, the mirror matches, but in a lot of other matches, was to see this deck kind of morph from, like I said earlier, a all an aggro deck to a mid range deck. And Chandra's just one of the best cards at just being flexible. You know, it has four modes, including its ultimate, which if you get to, you're going to win. Um, and just being able to do everything from kill a Kalidus, add mana to play the last spell so that Hazard can attack or just getting the exile effect to gain card advantage uh, and or dealing the last couple points of damage is very important and I think is just like the perfect card for this deck if you're playing uh, enough lands to support it. 
So, all right, final thoughts on this deck. Uh, I thought the deck was great. Um, I think moving forward, we're going to see Zombies and Black Green Constrictor or Black Green Energy come up more. There's definitely going to be a lot of hate going into GP Minneapolis this weekend. Um, I think a couple cards worth noting in the mirror are Blur to Blades. It's a card that we haven't really seen a ton of play in standard at all. And it's a card that I think in the mirror match, if they're going to stay low to the ground, it can, uh, it can really do some damage. As well as we're going to see whether or not the four Hazards is going to be now a staple, which means we're going to see some numbers change a little bit. And a couple cards worth noting as well. I saw Collective Defiance in a, in a few of the lists, and I think that's also something to just watch for. We're going to see a lot of players trying to attack this deck with killing the creatures because, as a lot of people found out of the Pro Tour, you can't really block versus this deck well. It has a lot of ways to just be tricky around uh, allowing you to do what you want to do in that regard. And so it'd be, you know, I think conducive to a good game plan for mono red decks to maybe have some kind of like other switch or plan B to start going to the face a little bit more because people are going to bring in more removal spells than creatures to block. So that's my last little piece of information in this deck. Um, look, looking to this weekend, I know I'm going to probably be playing either this Ramen Up Red deck or Zombies. And so I look to uh, play against it or play with it a lot of games. And uh, hopefully we'll see. I get to uh, sack a lot of deserts and go to the face. That's going to be the deck of the week. Ramming up ruins. We'll see you next week. Till then, take care. And so, like, Greenland's breaking into the back cave. And what does it discover? A cave inside the back cave. Caveception. Yes. I heard, I, heard I heard she's not even in the movie that much. Look, well, of course. I mean, it's Mary Jane. It's not, it's not Mary Jane Presents with Spider Man Homecoming. Okay? <laughs> And you score six victory points. But while that flash is in play, the rogues cannot use their game effect, which is called teamwork. Right? So when I use